So in our configuration of MPS, we have looked at configuring radius clients and servers. We've looked at configuring policies. Now let's look at configuring accounting. Now, in the realm of network authentication, accounting has nothing to do with numbers and math and finances. It has to do with tracking user access. So everything we've dealt with up till this point has been authenticating users and granting them access. Accounting is a process of logging that access, either granted or denied, logging that access so that we can report on it later on and see what's been going on on our network. So when we're talking about accounting, that's what we're talking about. Now, we have three different areas here in our accounting tab. We have our uh, our wizard right here, the accounting configuration wizard. We have options for configuring a log file and options for configuring SQL server logging. We'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, with the configuration as a whole, if you remember here, we talked about being able to use the wizard to handle configurations for us. And that's great, but it does basically a configuration. If you want anything different or unique, you're probably going to have to go through and create your own, um, uh, create your own custom configuration. The, uh, wizard configuration if you use radius very much, it's not going to give you enough flexibility to do everything you want to do. With accounting, however, that's a little bit different. You can pretty much do whatever you want just by doing the wizard. So let's click on configure accounting and click next. Now there are four different options for logging. We can log to an SQL server database. We can log to a text file. We can log to both, or we can log to SQL, and then if we can't reach SQL, we can fail over to logging to a text file. All right, why would you want to log to SQL rather than a text file? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, your text file is probably going to be local, which means if it grows too big, it could conceivably, you know, it might take a while, but you could theoretically get to the point where you fill up your drive with your logs and then your system stops working. Theoretically, you can do the same thing to your SQL server. But your SQL server is probably going to have a whole lot more uh, storage. Um, and that will take a while. That's not something that's going to happen in a week and a half. But just something to be aware of. But there is actually a much bigger reason to log to an SQL server rather than just local storage. And that is going through text log files can be really annoying. And you can use tools that will help you search through the text files but it's still going to be an annoying, labor-intensive, time-consuming process. The advantage of logging to an SQL database is that you can then run queries and reports on that data from the SQL database, and it gives you a lot better way to manage those log files. So now, instead of scrolling through my text file or searching through my text file looking for something, I can pull up a query and say, show me every time this particular user has tried to log in in the last six months. And it will give that to me in my query results. Or I can, you know, go a step farther and generate a whole report off of it. I can generate reports that shows me, you know, how many requests have been granted in the last week, how many have been denied, what type of policy, which policy has caused. And it can give me very, very thorough reporting if I take the time to build it. Now, that's not set up automatically, right? By default, if you log to an SQL database, then it's going to log that information. You'll have to build your queries and your reports off of that. So that's why it makes a lot of sense to log to an SQL database. Now, in order to do that, you have to have an SQL database. And so you see when we come in here to SQL Server Login, we've got to create a data link between the NPS and an existing SQL server. Uh, you also have to select an existing database in the SQL server or have it create a new database. And anyway, you'll see that it will log, you can log accounting requests, authentication requests, periodic accounting status, and uh, periodic authentication status. So all of this can go to our SQL server if we have an SQL server set up and running ready to go for this. If we don't, then we're looking at logging to a text file.
So since I don't have an SQL server in this little, you know, one machine network that I can use, we're going to log to a local text file, even though in a production environment, I really, really, really suggest you use the SQL database. If at all possible, it will make your life infinitely easier. So we can log the same things, accounting requests, authentication requests, periodic accounting status, periodic authentication status. We can uncheck any of this if we want to and not get it or not log it, or we can choose to leave it set and go to log it. We specify the location where it's going to go. In this case, the default is C Windows System 32 log files. Now you may, if you have another physical drive or another volume, you might want to put that off in a different volume just so it's not filling up space on your operating system drive. You can even do it to a uh, remote computer. <clears throat> It's still going as a text file, but you can do it to a remote computer if you have more storage somewhere else. Now, notice this. What happens if the log fails, if logging fails? And right here, if logging fails due to network or other problems, NPS can continue processing connection requests, or it can discard them to preserve the accounting data accuracy. In other words, if I can't record it, I check it, and they don't connect. Or if I can't record it, I'm going to go ahead and let them in anyway, and we're just going to assume it's going to be okay. Um... So that's what this option is here. If checked, if logging fails, then we're just not going to accept any connection requests. We're just going to discard them all. If I uncheck that, so this is ineffective or effectively fail closed. If there's a failure with our logging, for whatever reason, we just shut it down and we're not going to allow anything to happen. If I uncheck that, it's fail open. It we can't log, there's a failure logging, that's okay, we're going to go ahead and let everybody in anyway. So that's what this option is about. Let's go ahead and click Next. And then here is our settings, where we're logging to, what we're logging, how often do we create a new log file, delete the older log files when the disk is full, which hopefully will keep you from completely crashing. You can, by the way, stop that from happening, but you could potentially run into problems. And then if there's a failure, do not perform authentication. So we click Next and Close. And that now sets up our log file. Now if we come here, actually let's start with this one. So right here shows us where we're configured to. That's our status. This lets us change our uh, change our properties, change what's being logged, change what happens if this is a failure action, and then the log file says what format we're using, what, uh, how often we create a new log file, and what happens when the disk gets full. Okay, there we go. That is how we can configure logging for the NPS server.